When you first to joined Toastmasters, you introduced yourself to the club by delivering an icebreaker speech. It's the first speech in our communication program. With all our new members lately, we can expect to hear quite a few of them as they introduce themselves. Our next speaker this evening is our club president, and he is delivering his 14th icebreaker speech. He's taking a little more time than somebody delivering their first one, and will be timed at 14 to 16 minutes. We are all going to help rate, evalu help evaluate rate. You should have a small piece of paper in front of you. Ray asks that you evaluate him based on your questions. Your answers should be brief. Please welcome Ray Stonehouse, distinguished toastmaster with past, present, and future, past, present, and future Ray Stonehouse. This past January, January 2016, I celebrated an important milestone in my life. 22 years as a Toastmaster. What I'd like to do this evening, by way of icebreaker, past, present, future, is like give you some of the ideas what it's been like. Now we're a fairly new club right now. We have quite a few new members. We haven't had a chance to get to know each other. Icebreakers give people a chance to get to know each other. So what I'd like to do in the brief short period that we have together is just to tell you what my experience has been like with Toastmasters. Why I joined, why I stayed with it, what I hope to get out of it. When I was in my 20s and 30s, I was drawn to leadership positions. They seemed to be easy to get. I suspect that they were because nobody else wanted them. So I was able to take those roles. I'm a registered nurse. I was active in my professional body. I was active as a union steward, as a joint occupational health and safety steward. Those were leadership roles. But what I soon found out was that to be a leader, you also needed to be a good communicator. Now, my base personality at that time, I was a shy introvert. Shy introverts aren't comfortable with public speaking. And I wasn't comfortable with public speaking. Yet, to be an effective leader, you had to have those good communication skills. And I didn't have them. In 1994, in January, 22 years ago, a colleague of mine, we were both leaders at a local organization, and I was asked to do some public speaking. And I balked at it. I avoided doing it because I, I, wouldn't, I didn't want to do it with anything. So he says, why don't you come out to Toastmasters and learn about public speaking? And I had absolutely no idea what Toastmasters was. I hadn't heard about it before. And he took me out. We went to the Monday Night Toastmasters, Kelowna Toastmasters. And he brought me in. And I was made very comfortable there. There was an older fellow. I call him elderly fellow. But he, back then, he's probably the same age as I am now. So I'm not sure if I'm elderly or not. But, but he was old back then. And he took me around. And he introduced me to every single member in the club. Now, shy introverts, we're not really fond of going around and shaking people's hand. Like, you know, after you say hi, well, you know, you don't know what comes next. So I found that very uncomfortable. But I survived, and I, I participated in the meeting. They didn't call upon me, but I, I took everything in. I listened to speeches. I listened to table topics, and I saw people standing up. And I saw people that looked like they were very comfortable with public speaking. I also saw some people that seemed to be fairly uncomfortable, brand new, but they're still trying it. And I really got excited about it. I went home that night, and I remained excited about it. By midnight, I hadn't joined yet, but by midnight, I had my icebreaker speech already written down and practiced. I already delivered. By 2 and 3 in the morning, I had speech number 2 and number 3 all set to go. And I thought, I've never experienced anything in the world like this Toastmasters. I couldn't imagine. I was just completely fired up. By 5 o'clock, I realized, you know, maybe I shouldn't have had those three cups of regular coffee <laughs> <laughs> that they plied me with. That was, I guess that's a secret to hook people into Toastmasters. Give, give them unleaded coffee. And I don't drink, un, I, don't drink, I drink decaffeinated coffee. So that got me excited about Toastmasters, and I did join eventually. I didn't join that club, but I joined another club. And I was with that club for five years. And in the beginning, I took on all the different roles 
in the, the agenda, very much the same as our, it's a different club, but the agenda was very similar. I took all the different roles. But for the long time, I was really quite nervous about taking on that, delivering that icebreaker speech. I think I, my recollection was I avoided it probably almost 10 months before. I think I even chaired meetings before I delivered my icebreaker speech because it took that, that long to get the nerve up to do it. But I eventually did. And I think what they say, this is my 14th icebreaker speech for this presentation this evening. That first icebreaker speech that I did, back in those days, they were supposed to be five to seven minutes long. And I went close to about 11 minutes. So even back then, I started having challenges with time. But I had some problems with that one, too. Because I, I took the approach for an icebreaker speech. I wanted to share with the club my essence, what, what made me. And some of the things that were important to me was my upbringing, the way that our family of origin. My father was a little on the, I don't know what the word would say, brutal, no, maybe not brutal, maybe maybe a little bit aggressive, spare the rod, spoil the child. And that played an important part of my development of my personality, of the speech that I had. Well, the fellow before me was an older fellow, and he gave his speech. And he took the exact opposite approach about sparing the rod and spoiling the child. So when my turn to came up, I was really quite agitated. I was all fired up, and I guess maybe that's what kept me speaking so long. But I delivered my speech, and I was really mad. I was angry. After that, a fellow, a long-term long -time member said to me, a kind of mentorship type uh, discussion, he said, Ray, he says, don't, don't get excited about the other speakers. This is your turn, the camera's on you. In this case, the camera's on me. You know, enjoy it, forget about what everybody else says. This is your time, this is your time to shine. So from then on, that was a, an important mentorship that I had. I stayed with that club for five years, eventually moving over to Kelowna Flying Solo Toastmasters. And in that time, I did finally, as I said, I did that icebreaker speech. I started working my way through the program. I took on a role, a leadership role, as the vice president of education in a club, the West Side Club, the one that I eventually joined. As, as I said, I was there for five years. And what happened was people weren't delivering speeches. So what I would do is if somebody wouldn't deliver a speech, I would fill in and I would do a speech. I told them, you guys don't start doing speeches, I'm just going to keep on talking. <laughs> kind, of, kind of like we're doing right now, actually. <laughs> I'm going to keep on speaking until you start delivering speeches. Well, I was able to complete one of the advanced manuals. Now, the advanced program is some 15 different manuals, and there's five speeches in each, so whatever that is, up to close to 60 different speeches. Whatever, I'm not good at math. <laughs> whatever, whatever it adds up to. But to get the credit to the next level up from your competent communicator, back in those days it was competent Toastmaster, now it's a competent communicator, to get to the next level, the advanced communicator bronze, you had to do com two complete manuals. Well, I've made a speech here before and I've, I've mentioned that I'm not a destination type person. I'm a journey person. So while I had these 15 manuals and to get credit in the, the club program, I should have been doing one manual, one manual, one manual. But I took a shotgun approach, and what I did was I was working out of some 10 of the 15 manuals at the same time. My idea was that I don't think you can really force a speech. The ideas come when they come. So if you get an idea for a presentation, and it fits into here, plug it into here. So it took a longer time for me to work my way through the advanced program, working up until, so 1994 is when I joined, and in 2008, I was awarded Toastmasters International's highest designation for our education program, which is the Distinguished Toastmaster Award, the DTM. So if you hear DTM tossed around, it's Distinguished Toastmaster. We get a joke around here that stands for don't time me. <laughs> That's why I'm allergic to the red light. <laughs> so the DTM. So it took me 14 years. That's, that's a long journey. But in that time, the destination really wasn't that important to me. What was important to me was the journey. I probably gave some 40 or 45 different speeches in that time. So to get the advanced communicator bronze, you had to do six speeches. Then to get the advanced communicator silver, you had to do another six speeches, and plus a couple other presentations. So, no, actually, sorry, make that 10 speeches. So 10, 20, 
then to get the advanced communicator gold, another 10. So there's 30 speeches in that advanced program working through. That's just the communication side of things. So there are 30 different advanced speeches. That's a lot of gaps in the agenda to fill up during that time. But there was also the leadership component to it. That took a little bit longer. One of the criteria to earn your distinguished Toastmaster designation is that and when, once you're the upper levels, the first part of it is you have a manual right now that we give you when you join, and that's your community or your uh, the, the competent leader manual. So those are ten projects you can compete or can complete while you're in the club. The advanced part of it, as you go into the program a little longer, is perhaps serving as a club executive, serving as an area director, division director, or on the district team. So that can take a little while to do. And then one of the other criteria to, that you have to, to do is you either have to find a club that is struggling and go spend a year or so with them as a club coach, helping them to rebuild. You get credit for that. That's one way you can do it. Or you can start a brand new club. Now, I was able to get that criteria. I was one of the uh, club mentors for a club Okanagan Express, no sorry, Okanagan Advanced Toastmasters, OATS. This was back in 2008, 2007, I was able to do that. Unfortunately, that club just folded this year. We gave a good kick at the can for you know, almost 10 years, but we just weren't able to sustain it. But I did get credit back then for building that club. Some of the other criteria you have to do is there's a program called the Success Club and Success Leadership Program. So there's specialty projects in there, some higher advanced projects that you do. One of them is to run a speech craft. I ran six speech crafts over that period of time. Now what a, six, what a speech craft is, it's a self-contained crash course in public speaking. I run them for six weeks at a time. We just ran one back in the fall. Yvonne helped out with that and uh, Teresa, who's not here this evening, we did it with the local CNIB. So I've got credit for my next Distinguished Toastmaster. So it took me to 2008, 14 years to get that first Distinguished Toastmaster. Now I know many Toastmasters over the years, they've got this idea that once you get your DTM, you're an expert. You don't need to learn anymore. But it's not true. Something I learned way back, the, the think of it, is the Communication program, the first manual that most of you are working on right now, and this particular speech is coming from, the 10 speeches, we think of that as elementary school. This is where you learn your basic skills of public speaking. By the time you complete those 10 speeches, you are way ahead of most of the general population when it comes to skills for public speaking. Then when you get into the advanced program, it's like being in secondary school, where you're taking advanced programs. You work your way through that. There's a advanced projects and there's advanced leadership side of things. So by the end of that, you're starting to become an effective leader and a very effective communicator. So what happens is, the better that you become at speaking, the more leadership opportunities arise. The more you take these leadership opportunities, the more speaking opportunities come inside or uh, present themselves. We have a whole other part of our program that are contests, they're coming up pretty soon, where the, the more, profi more proficient or, I'd say, courageous speakers uh, challenge themselves against other people basically around the world. I've done that in the past. I'm probably going to be doing that again, so, so that's coming up. So I've got my Distinguished Toastmaster 2008. So now what? Now what is you do it over again. As I said, this is my 14th time through the Accommodative Communicator Manual. I continue. I do one e at least one a year. I continue to challenge myself with the skills. In the advanced program, I've already worked through the advanced leadership, advanced bronze leadership manual. So that's the next level up from, from these journals or these manuals that everybody has here. The next thing I need to do is I need to complete the advanced silver manual, or sorry, advanced silver leadership. What has to take place from that one is, once again, start another club. That's, that's a big challenging one. Another one in there is take on a high performance leadership project. Most of you, because you're all new, you're not familiar with that. But it's an advanced leadership project. And what you have to do, it's very much an idea of a, a real world application. 
where you find a cause or a mission that you're going to undertake. You get a team working with you. They help you solve the, 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 the problem that you're working on. So on the one side, you're leading a team. The other side of it, you get a leadership team that serves as a mentor to advise you. So somebody's advising you and then you're managing somebody else or leading somebody else. So I have that ahead of me. I've got an idea for it. Starting a club might not be for a while. So is the next distinguished Toastmaster DTM? DTM squared? Is that in the future? <laughs> not right now because it's going to take a while for that developing a club. But that's not to say you can't start over again. I'll be submitting very quickly for my third advanced communicator bronze level. You can keep stacking them up. It can be very challenging to get that DTM. So it might have to wait until I retire to get my second DTM because I'm, I'm a journey person. Destination really doesn't matter. Maybe I'll have six or seven advanced communicator bronze, golds, and silvers by the time. It's not really that important. What's important is standing up and speaking on a regular basis, continually challenging myself, honing my speaking abilities, hopefully sharing some of that sage wisdom with other people so that ever other people learn from it. So that's been the past, that's been the present. Why do I stay in Toastmasters? What's the future? Some of you can say, well, you've done the program so many times, why would you want to continue doing it? Well, as long as it's fun, I will continue doing it. There was a comment earlier about servant leadership. You learn servant leadership by doing. My one of I don't know how it ever happened, but I found my passion in life was helping other people self-actualize. I continue to come out here to help other people to become better speakers. When I joined, I joined to become a better speaker. I didn't know that it would help me with self-confidence. I didn't know that it would make me a better speaker. I didn't know that I would become a writer. I didn't know I'd become a webmaster. I didn't know I was going to become an master of ceremonies. You know, I didn't know all these things are going to happen. And that's what happens once you start your Toastmasters journey. That's my journey so far up till now. I wish you luck on yours. I hope I'm here to celebrate your 22nd anniversary. <laughs> Madam Chair.